Hey all, your OS reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the iProta Yoga. This is a 11.6 inch laptop that also has a 360 hinge, can be converted into a touchscreen tablet, and has a aluminum all metal build selling for around 220 bucks often when it's on sale, which is relatively affordable, a pretty entry level ultra portable laptop can be thought of as a alternative to something like a Chromebook. This was probably made in the same factory in terms of the design as a few other existing 11.6 inch laptops we've seen from Shenzhen China, including models like the EasyBook X1, as well as the BMAX Y11 and the T-Class F5. So it's just the branding that's a little bit different, but that doesn't matter because those three other models I also really enjoyed. It uses the Intel Apollo Lake N4100 processor processor, which is clocked up to 2.4 gigahertz, and the seller online is not going to be a performance king, but that's to be expected at this price, and it's good enough for things like general web browsing and watching back videos at 4K, which we'll take a closer look at later on. In terms of the other specs, we're talking about 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of built-in SSD, which are both a little on the lower side, but keeping in mind that this is, again, a touchscreen computer, a metal build, for this $200 price, I would say it still is okay. It has a full HD IPS LCD display, which is also surprisingly good in terms of the saturation, and it covers up to 97% of sRGB. It supports dual-band Wi-Fi, but there's no Wi-Fi 6 support, and has a 3,500 milliamp hour capacity battery. Battery, 27 watt hours. Now this is the one spec, like I said, that we also saw on those other previous computers, which is just a little bit on the small side. In fact, these days we do have phones that have even bigger batteries. Part of the reason is they made this design just so compact and slim that there just really wasn't any room left. But it still is sufficient for about four to five hours of usage in my testing so far of light web browsing and watching videos, but this is definitely not an endurance champion. It's more about the portability. Now in terms of IO, we have a Type-C port, which again, can be a little rare to find on a budget computer. It's good to see. And there's also a micro USB 2.0 port, so you can use an adapter to transform micro USB to full size type A. Uh, but again, this thing is so small that there was no room to even built in a full sized USB port. So inside the box here, aside from the laptop itself, which we'll take a closer look at, you also get just a quick user guide, as well as the charger, which is a standard USB Type-C, and that means you can use pretty much any universal standard charger with power delivery these days and still have it work. In terms of the size here, again, 11.6 inch laptop, definitely very compact. Here it is next to kind of an average phone these days with a six inch screen, so you get an idea there. Here it is next to a Sharpie, a standard pen in terms of the thickness. It definitely is a super premium build and design, like I said, because the entire thing is made out of metal, from the lid, the chamfered, shiny edges, even the bottom piece on the back is all made out of metal where you're touching it. So very hefty, feels like something that would cost easily two or three times the price. Otherwise, on the back here, we have some soft touch rubber feet. There is a slot here for the M2 SSD that you can expand on. And then located on the spine, you'll find access to stereo speakers. So this is on the left and the right edge, which is actually a pretty clever placement compared to the majority of laptops that tend to stick it onto the back. And then you end up just really easily muffling it when you put it onto a surface. This is harder to cover up, has pretty good stereo separation. There is a micro SD card reader here. Other side just houses headphone jack, microphone, volume rocker, and a power key, which are all made out of metal as well. The hinge of any 360 degree yoga laptop is always going to be a little more stiff to accommodate it to go into different positions and hold itself. So in terms of opening up the laptop, you have to use two hands, one on the bottom and then flick it open. But otherwise it is, again, just a pretty seamless experience in which you'll be greeted to the trackpad as well as the keyboard. So with compact laptops in general, you're never going to have the largest keyboard in the world, but it is a standard chiclet island style layout and has overall pretty decent travel and feedback. So even though the keys are gonna be a little bit smaller, it still is okay after you start using it for a while, you get used to it. I was able to get a comfortable typing speed for essays and documents, no real issues there. It's not a backlit keyboard, so that's one omission to note. We do have some LEDs here for the caps lock, and then down below here, the trackpad, surprisingly, is also quite good. Uh, it is using a precision touchpad. Feels actually quite good when it comes to just navigating around, doesn't really lag or stick. Now here is one thing to note, would be that the keyboard deck, this portion here, I believe, does have a bit more plastic 
construction. So the metal part basically just stops here on the edges, on the back, and the lid. Uh, this particular palm rest area is going to be having a bit more of that plastic, but still feels super solid. There's no real flexing. As far as the display is concerned, again, 11.6 inches, and it is a fully laminated IPS panel, so no gap between the screen and the glass. It looks really beautiful in terms of the contrast levels, especially with a kind of darker color or blues, it just really jumps out. Very generous viewing angles. The only slight thing though is it's not necessarily the brightest screen I've ever seen, combined with the fact that it's a glossy glass covering, meaning that if you are in a super bright environment, um, it may still be a little bit harder to see, but under moderate environments, even if there's a little bit of overcast sunlight as well as indoors, no issues there. A little bit of a larger chin there that also serves double duty for this capacitive Windows key that you can press on to bring up the Windows start screen that can be handy when you're in the tablet mode. Now one thing I'm not the biggest fan of though is because the bezels are pretty slim, they actually shifted the webcam to the very bottom right hand corner and this is, again, not the best placement because it will be pointing upwards kind of at your nose. Honestly, if you're doing a lot of video conferencing, you'll probably want to attach either an external webcam or use it in the tablet tent mode. So that would mean folding the computer backwards, as once you are in this tent mode, the webcam will be pointing upwards at you, a better position. Again, it is a pretty good hinge, so it supports the weight of the computer in a variety of angles. If you want to further kind of push it backwards or forwards, it can still hold it, as you can see there, pretty stiff. And while you are in the tablet mode, it will disable the keyboard and trackpad. So if I press on something on the back here accidentally or move the touchpad, the cursor is not going to move. It can also fold it completely flat into the full tablet mode, as you can see there held into place magnetically. There is also an accelerometer, so it will rotate itself as you are flipping it. So all of the cursors and points are just a little bit larger, easier to hit with your fingers. And I can also bring up something like a virtual keyboard, which is pretty standard in Windows, pretty large and responsive. It is worth mentioning that this model, though, doesn't support a pressure-sensitive active stylus, so there is no Wacom pen accessory that you can use to draw on the touchscreen. It's just capacitive with your fingers. Taking a closer look at the system specs, now, uh, overall, I would say that it is pretty responsive when it comes to just the navigating around the UI. Still feels pretty snappy, surprisingly. Out of the 64 gigs of SSD, you have around 35 gigs, which is free after the Windows operating system is installed. So that is definitely a little on the low side, especially if you're trying to install more programs and apps. Uh, but for media files, you can always supplement that using a aforementioned micro SD card, a thumb drive, or cloud storage. Very clean, no real bloatware or extra apps which are installed out of the box aside from Edge and uh, the basic Windows tools. So we can try and browse the web here. Let's go to a page like The Verge and see how long it takes to render. We're connected using uh, 5G Wi-Fi right now. And again, surprisingly snappy still when it comes to the loading speeds in general. Uh, so the Celeron N4100 has been optimized to work quite well on this particular laptop. Pinch to zoom is sometimes still a little bit jumpy, but at least again, pages do load surprisingly quickly, considering that The Verge is a pretty complex site with lots of ads, video elements, and as you're scrolling down, things do take a split second to load, but overall the scrolling action itself is still very smooth. Just a split second and afterwards we are in, and we can still jump back and forth between these currently open pages. Everything seems to still be preserved here. Overall, in my testing so far, I would say I can get around, let's say, eight tabs in the browser, and things are still relatively smooth in terms of switching back and forth between them. But if you start to press a little bit harder, 10 or 15 tabs, it's going to start to close out of some of the background ones. Uh, so just be a little conscious there, but in terms of general usage, not too bad as long as you don't have a million tabs that's open. So anyways, pretty good web browsing experience in terms of the speed. And if we talk a little bit about the benchmark scores, we have again seen the Sauron N4100 before, but this is a uh, processor which has a CPU passmark score of around 2,450 these days, considered to be relatively entry level, but still a little better than something like the Sauron N3450, which is also very common in low cost laptops around this $200 price range. We saw these uh, in a ton of other models previously, and this currently has a score that's under 2,000. So we are talking about a slight performance bump here, and that slight difference is noticeable in the sense that everything just feels a little bit snappier. Again, by no means is this going to rival a Core i-series chip or a powerful Ryzen chip these days, but still is surprisingly not bad.
All right, so turning the volume down a little lower there, takeaways would be, again, it is a pretty enjoyable video watching experience because of the great display when it comes to the sharpness and contrast, as well as the above average speakers. Now, it's not gonna really give you a lot of bass. In fact, it's still a little tinny at higher volume levels, but it is better than you'll expect for sure. And for just watching back some videos, it actually is pretty decent, giving you a nice experience. Videos do load back relatively quickly, but you do have to sometimes wait a split second for, let's say, 4K clips to completely render, as you can see there, but scrolling still feels smooth enough. And as far as these advanced stats are concerned, when we switched over to 4K, we saw that there is a little bit of drop frames that's being captured, but it's not too noticeable as you're watching the video, still feels pretty smooth. I think part of the reason is also due to the fact that it has pretty strong Wi-Fi reception, meaning that I was consistently getting almost full bars, even though I'm a little further away from the router at the moment. So I don't have to wait too long when it comes to just uh, loading up pages. It serves the purpose decently when it comes to entertainment and web browsing. Those are two applications where I think this computer does very well. As far as other applications are concerned, like I mentioned in the past with other lower cost computers with similar specs, it does all right for things like document editing, Word and Excel, whether it's for schoolwork or even a little bit of light business work should be just perfectly sufficient. In terms of doing a little bit of photo editing, that's also perfectly possible. If you are doing a simple touch up using Photoshop, no issues there at all. In terms of video editing though, that's where it's not quite as recommended for any entry level computer with a Celeron chip. It's it's just going to be a lot more choppy because of the Intel integrated graphics compared to a dedicated GPU and you have to wait a lot longer for the videos to actually finish processing and render. So not quite as ideal there but it might squish by if you're doing just a full HD clip and just very small edits or tweaks but definitely not its strength. Otherwise, you do have access to, again, thousands, if not millions of apps uh, in terms of legacy programs, any executables you can find from the web, drivers, software, things for printers can all be installed. Just like any other regular Windows computer, it has just a bit more of support there with older programs and apps in general compared to Chrome OS, which is still a little bit of a newer system. Uh, you also have access, of course, to the Microsoft Store for some more optimized apps and things like social media tools, which also can be installed really without any problems here. And that also brings us to touching on some of the games. If you're playing back lighter mobile style games, things like Homescapes, Candy Crush, that works just fine on this quad core processor, uh, no issues there. But if you're trying to get into more serious gaming, things like let's say Cyberpunk, it's obviously not gonna be really a good experience because again, integrated graphics and not a more powerful GPU at the end of the day. Uh, but like I said before, with these entry-level computers, you can always rely on cloud streaming and cloud gaming these days, including xCloud, Google Stadia, if you want to really do a bit of gaming, this becomes just a portal while it's connected over the cloud to more powerful hardware elsewhere. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the iProta Yoga, this low-cost $200 laptop that has a surprisingly good build, again made out of metal on the front and the back, uh, feeling really reassuring in terms of the weight, uh, just the fit and finish is awesome to see at this price, and a surprisingly vibrant and contrasty display, coupled with performance that's good enough to get you by with a fast SSD for things like reading up documents, doing some web browsing and watching and streaming videos. But again, this is not going to be a fit if you're doing serious video editing as well as gaming. But also really not bad for a super compact small laptop. I actually think that this is going to be a better choice than many Chromebooks out there. Very solid $200 laptop if you want something with above average build quality and a touchscreen. 